subscribe. What up, players? Wobots stay up in this mood. Here's a Tau Fire Warrior I painted a long time ago. I'm gonna be doing a little tutorial today, show you a really easy way to get a great looking battered up Tau Fire Warrior onto the table. And so if you collect Tau or if you know anyone who does, then possibly you'll find this of some use. Okay, so like I said, I painted this a while ago, which means that I kind of forgot how to do it. This was before I kept the painting log where I wrote down all the paints I used in every single step and so I had kind of forgotten what I did. All I remember was that I wanted to build something that kind of mirrored a painter who I saw in White Dwarf, Bruno Rizzo's towel, which looked like they were stuck on a desert world. Their equipment was all battered up and beaten and very weathered looking and I, I really enjoyed it. If you uh, haven't t been able to tell from my recent Blood Angels videos, I'm, I, I really dig the, the battered, beaten up look. Weathered and, you know, just grizzled troops. But you don't really associate that with Tao. A lot of people associate Tao with anime, clean lines, very, very sharp and, and very, you know, very clean. So I thought Bruno Rizzo's army was just fantastic. What I did was, first thing I did was I sculpted a little bit of, I took a little bit of green, green stuff and I sculpted over the shoulder pad because I had the idea that these models would be from an offshoot of the main Tau army. So, you know, the Tau army has that like upside down peace symbol. I, I, I don't remember if I saw this in, in Bruno's models or if I just had the idea to do it myself, but I probably saw it off of him or somebody else. I just covered up the, the Tau symbol with green stuff, painted over it green, and then painted this, this marking. My, my idea for this army is that they've been away from their, their, you know, they've they splintered off and they've been stranded on a world for so long that they've given up the concept of the greater good and now they're just looking out for each other until rescue can come. So, so, I think that's a cool fluffy way of, of, of representing them. They got lost in a warp storm and stranded on a desert world and now they're just trying to make it. I think it's really interesting with, with the equipment that they have and the troops that they have. So, so like I said, I had to re, re, reimagine and try to remember everything that I did. So this is the model that I came up with last night when I was preparing to do this video. It's pretty close. These models I got for really, really super cheap from from a friend of mine and so the, the, the paint was still on them. It was either still on them or or it had been cleaned away and stripped but not completely stripped or not stripped very well. So so you might notice that the paint looks kind of thick because when I sprayed the primer on it adhered to the old paint that was on it but I think it's it, it's doable and, and it's very good tabletop quality and like I said it's really easy to reproduce. This job is really easy to reproduce. It's just a bunch of really citadel foundations and washes which we're going to show you right now. So this is the model we're going to be painting up. As you can see I've already primered him in black and here are and I've already covered up his little shoulder pad with green stuff. So here are the paints we're going to use. Deneb Stone, Camry Brown, Calthen Brown, Mechrite Red are our foundation paints. Our regular paints, or our Citadel color paints, are Skull White, Bolt Gun Metal, Bleached Bone, Desert Yellow, Codex Gray, Hawk Turquoise, and Ice Blue. And the two washes we're going to use are the dual tag team of Bad Dad Black and Devil in Mud. I call them the dual tag team because they can solve most most of your problems. They're very, very good at shading and getting into those recesses and adding a lot of great depth to the model. So, okay, the first thing we're gonna do with our guy is we are going to paint the, the 
bodysuit, I guess we'll call it, as well as the high heeled boots that they're wearing. So anything underneath the armor plates, like the sleeves, the belt, the pants, and these Versace high heel boots, we're gonna paint them in Calthin Brown. Okay, we'll see you when that's done. All right, now that the bodysuit is painted up, I forgot to mention, try to leave the gloves because the gloves were gonna paint white. But the pants, the boots, the belt, and the sleeves should be this Calton Brown color. While we're waiting for that to dry, we're gonna base coat most of the armor pieces in Camry Brown. And when you're doing that, I want you to pick out parts of the armor that you're gonna paint in this white color. So you're gonna use Deneb Stone for that. You're also gonna use the Deneb Stone for the gloves. So as you can see from this guy standing up, I used Deneb Stone for one of these armor plates on the leg. I didn't really see it too well because the colors are pretty close, but I also used a Deneb Stone for the middle of this shoulder pad, and I used the Deneb Stone for the helmet, the gloves, and I think that was it. It's just to give your models some little bit of contrast. I also painted the backpack in Camry Brown. So it's not gonna look like this yet. We're just doing our base color, but we're gonna build up to, to these colors. So, so like I said, pick out the majority. I wanna say about 80, 85% of your armor pieces in Camry Brown, and then pick maybe like the shoulder pad or one of these armor plates on the leg to paint in Deneb Stone. All right, and we'll see you when that is done. Okay, sorry, camera's a little bit shaky there for a second. We've got the shoulder pads and the armor plates, backpack in their base colors. As you can see, I did the white for this, this little butt flap and the bottom plate of the shoulder pad as well as this part of his helmet and his gloves. So the next thing we're gonna do while that dries, we're going to take some Devlin mud to the Calthin Brown bodysuit underneath the armor. And you just want, wait, Devlin mud? Was it Devlin mud or was it bad at black? Ah, oh no, what did I do? Shh, stop beeping phone. I can't, I can't be bothered to answer my text messages right now and think of very important things. Okay, I think this is bad at black. It's bad at black. I'm gonna go with bad at black. Oh, I wish I wrote this down. So, yeah, it's gotta be because it's forming really deep shadows. Shh! Stop it! Stop text messaging me! So, I will put some bad at black in the recesses. You want it to just go into the folds of the cloth. The great thing about these sculpts is that there's a lot of folds, like where these straps of the armor plates hit the, the trousers and just the folds in the trousers and the sleeves so the bad at black is gonna go go into all the right places just don't slap it on too thick you don't want to leave pools that are gonna dry with the you know those crazy rings so um yeah let's just put some bad at black in all the recesses and i remember what the devlin mud was for now devlin mud we're going to use a light glazing and what that means is just a little bit of um, don't use the the wash straight out of the pot cut it with a little bit of water or just use really small thin amounts and you're just going to get into the into the cracks of all the armor plates that's what the devil in mud was for because the armor plates are brown so mystery has been solved the mystery has been solved everybody so bad at black into the recesses in, of all the Calton Brown and Devlin mud into all the cracks and crevices of the armor. And we'll see you when that's done. All right, so we've got the wash on now. And the great thing about the wash, the washes is just that they, you know, if before you would need a black line, a lot of this, but which is basically using some chaos black to get into the armor cracks, but 
oh my gosh, I'm so popular. But with Devlin Mud going into the cracks and Bad Up Black on the bodysuit, it really does a lot of the work for you, which is fantastic. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get our desert colored armor plates, and we're gonna do that by using desert yellow. And you just wanna work it onto the armor plates and cover up the Camry Brown. And the Camry Brown is gonna make a great base coat to put underneath, so you don't really have to put more than one coat over all of the Camry Brown stuff. And the denim stone we just leave in that color. Oh, I also forgot to point out something else you might want to do is find places to put Camry Brown panels and pieces of the gun just to break up all the black. So for this one I put the top and the bottom underneath the the old towel set marking and for this one I did as well. You see it there and under there. Okay, so desert brown my friends and we'll see you when that's done. Alright, so now we're finally starting to see a little bit more of that yellowy desert mustard mustard yellow color, thanks to our desert yellow. The wash on the bodysuit is starting to finally dry. And we're gonna start highlighting now. So we're gonna take our bleached bone and we're going to paint highlights on the edges of the armor. So up on both sides of the helmet where it goes into the middle and on the side and down on the armor plates and we're only going to be doing the bleached bone on the desert yellow plates not on the deneb stone whites uh, deneb stone white parts so just on the yellow and all of the armor plates okay we'll come back when that's done All right, as you can see, we've got our bleached bone highlights all done. This is anywhere on the armor or anything that's colored desert yellow that would have hard lines and catch the light. Like these shoulder pads, knee pads, armor plates. And you can put as little or as much as you want. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put a little bit of Codex Gray and do edge highlighting on the gun. What I do is I hold my model under the light and I see where does the light naturally reflect off of here, these corners. So I put just a tiny little bit of paint on the edge of my brush and I just want to recreate that so that somebody looking from across the table will see where the where, where I put my highlights on my on my weapons, especially because the gun, the majority of the gun in this case is black. We are going to use Codex Gray for that. Okay, we'll see when that's done. Alright, now we're going to get into the cool part. So we're going to take a little bit of Hawk Turquoise and we're going to paint the... Let me just double check here. The top eye lens. The, the bigger of the two eye lens with Hawk Turquoise and the smaller one, but right below it, with Mechrite Red. We're also going to paint the front of the rifle scope with Hawk Turquoise. And you also are going to paint in this little vent right here. There are three little vents on the side of the gun. You're going to paint a little bit of Hawk Turquoise in there as well. Okay, we'll see you when that's done. All right, so now you're gonna take a little bit of ice blue and you're just gonna dot the top corner of the of each of these lenses. Actually, the eye lens, you're, you're gonna use the bottom middle because you can see the light naturally pools to the bottom middle. And you're gonna put a little bit of ice blue at the top of the scope. And we're just gonna leave the vents because we just want a hint of that glowing power underneath. So just the two eye lens. And also don't forget, like I did, to color the bottom eye lens with red, Mechrite red. See you when that's done. Okay, now we're going to use our bolt gun metal. And we're going to paint in first this little towel symbol on the end of the gun. We, 
there's two sides of it. It looks like a ball that got shoved in the middle of this rail gun. We're gonna paint that with bolt gun metal. We're also going to do the fun part, which is the scratches. So find places on the armor that you wanna give some battle damage and just take a little bit of bolt gun metal and you're just gonna make like the paint job on the metal plates. The armor plates have started to wear away. So as you can see, I painted in bolt gun metal on the two sides of the gun. And you're also looking for armor plates edges to scratch up with the bolt gun metal. This could be as little or as much as you want. But if you're just starting, you want to go a little bit more conservative and see if you want to build your way up. It's a lot easier to do that rather than just scratch up every single available surface and realize that your guy suddenly looks like a metal leopard. Like Def Leopard. Anyways, you know what I mean. Metal Leopard because it's got spots of metal. Oh, it's late. Alright, now that we've got a little bit of battle damage on our guy, thanks to the bolt gun metal, we're going to take the devil in mud and we're going to ring the battle damage. So it looks like scorch marks. Rather than just metal paint on a different color. So it looks like the paint is kind of scorched as it's chipping off. And that's what we want. So just take a little bit of Devlin mud. Don't cover the whole scorch, or don't cover the whole chip where the metal is. You just want to paint around the metal and that'll give a great scorched look just like that. Okay, that's Devlin mud. We will see you when that part is done. And there you have it, players. A quick and easy tutorial on how to paint a Tau Fire Warrior. I hope you liked it. If you want, you can add details to the backpack, like painting the grates metal or painting in the buttons if you want. And the last thing that we have to do before we can finally say we're done is paint the new motif in the shoulder pad and on the gun. So, what I'm using is this little symbol there. So it's really easy to recreate. Just use your thinnest brush and make two, make, make a big, a thick line and then a thin line right next to it and then just adjust it and color it out with black paint over that. Okay, so you can also add it to the gun like that. Again, it's like just add a, paint a white stripe and then a thinner white stripe next to it. Then you're gonna take black and you're just gonna black out the parts that you don't want it to be. Of course you can paint it whatever you want. You can just leave it open if you want and you don't have to do any of this battle damage at all. That's just what I did for my towel. If you just wanna give it the desert theme, then you know you can have stopped a couple steps ago, but I'm gonna add the final marking and then we'll wrap this video up for this how to paint a towel fire warrior tutorial. See you in a bit. And there's the new marking, the shoulder pad and on the rifle. And I hope you enjoyed this war boss tutorial on how to paint a fire cast Tau fire warrior. Please let me know if there's anything else I can do for you. I thought this would just be a fun little distracting thing, a little bit different from my regular tutorials and uh, different from the Blood Angels and the Dark Eldar stuff I've been doing lately, but I had fun with it and I hope you did too and I hope you might have gotten inspired or might have learned something that you didn't know before or just had fun watching this video. Please let me know if you have anything else you'd like to see on my channel in the future. And don't forget to hit the like button, comment, leave me lots of comments. I love reading my comments and subscribe. Subscribe if you haven't already. All right, latest players.